A deep dive today into the bizarre fight between Bobcat Goldthwait and Jerry Seinfeld. And I think Jerry's having more of a fight with Bobcat than the other way. We will get to that. Ricky Gervais tweets, I wish I had a book out for people to burn. Stephen Colbert with, The news can be depressing these days, so take a mental wellness break from reading about how the president sexually assaulted someone to read about how he tried to use a heat ray against his own citizens. Mark Norman said, If you surround yourself with positive, talented people, you'll eventually become bitter and insecure. Conan O'Brien says, How are you doing? It has never felt like such an attack. And Mark Marin asks, Genesis kind of sucks, right? They do, like, kind of suck, but they kind of have a bunch of catchy songs. Mm. The early part of Genesis, you know, we're supposed to be like, oh, the Peter Gabriel stuff is brilliant. That kind of sucks. Phil Collins is writing pop songs. It's catchy. I wanted to say hi to the international listener, so I get a stats dashboard. Hey, are you the listener in Taronga, New Zealand? What's up? Appreciate you. Toronto? Cranley in the UK? Bengaluru in India? Coventry? Hornsey? Hello, everybody. I really appreciate you listening. All right, let's get to the Seinfeld thing. This is bizarre. From Cheat Sheet. First, they set up Jerry Seinfeld with his whole clean comedy thing, quoting an article in The Guardian that said, This is Jerry. A person who can defend themselves with a gun is just not very interesting, but a person who can defend themselves through Aikido or Tai Chi? Very interesting. It's so much easier when you're talking about something that's really important. You've already got a better foundation than someone who's bringing up something that does not need to be discussed. I do a lot of material about the chair. I find the chair very funny. That excites me. No one's really interested in that, but I'm going to get you interested. That, to me, is just a fun game to play, and it's the entire basis of my career. So there's an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. The guest is Bridget Everett. And during the conversation, Everett mentions a comedian she's friends with. And then Jerry goes ballistic. The name of the comedian is bleeped out, leaving many to wonder why. According to Cheat Sheet, the name in question is Bobcat Goldthwait. He's the director on Everett's Amazon TV pilot, Love You More, and cast her in the true TV series Misfits and Monsters. Jerry said about the bleeped out name comedian that we believe to be Bobcat Goldthwait, I don't like him at all. I'd kind of forgotten about him, and then there was a little article about him in the paper, and even in there, there was a veiled reference to his dislike of what I did. Didn't have my name, of course. Seinfeld was on for two minutes. He used to rail against me because they weren't as wild and dangerous as he was, because he sucked. He wasn't funny, and that's why I didn't get anywhere, because in comedy, nobody gives a bleep if you're cool, if you're lame. If you're funny, you win. If you're not funny, you don't. That's why he didn't like me, because I could actually do it. I can do it. I can do comedy. He can't. Stupid bleep. You're not scary or dangerous. You're just weak on stage. You're a weak act, Everett said. I love him. You can love him. He's going to need the love because he's not going to get it from the public. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So what's this all about? I'll just read from the article so that you don't think I'm loading this. Quote, the feud appears to go back a few years to when Seinfeld was romantically involved with Shoshana Lonestein, who was 17 at the time. Bobcat told the Spokesman Review in 1995, here is this creepy Scientologist guy dating teenage girls, which I don't care about one way or another. What I find creepy is that people are convinced he lives in that apartment and those are his wacky friends. Bobcat's talking about the TV show here. They don't like each other. They're actors paid to pretend they like Jerry Seinfeld. He's a weird guy, but everybody thinks he's normal and I'm weird. I'm going to butt in here with personal opinion here. What we're getting is Bobcat is upset that people think Jerry and um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Michael Richards and Jason Alexander, that they're all friends. That's what he's mad about. He doesn't seem to care about who Jerry's dating, who may or may not be 17 at the time. Doesn't care. But the, this idea that Jerry Seinfeld is friends with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, outrageous. This is so funny. Bobcat spoke to the Baltimore Sun in 2002 about the special comedian. Bobcat said... I don't know, man. Sitting around with a bunch of guys slaving over a new clapper joke? For God's sake. People are going to think all comics are crazy because here's a guy with $450 million bummed out because he can't get laughs at an improv. Dude, if it bums you out, don't go on stage. You've got $450 million. You can pay these people to clap. So that's what the feud's about. Not about the dating, about his comedy. This is so absurd. Uh, You want to look up. Go do this right now. Put the podcast on pause and go do this. Look up. Jeremy Kaplowitz's Seinfeld impression. K-A-P-L-O-W-I-T-Z. Jeremy Kaplowitz's Seinfeld impression. He does Jerry in the 1990s doing stand-up about dating teenagers. 
in the routine, I can't do a good cherry. I can't do a good anybody, but you know that already. Uh, much easier if this were Foxworthy. But Kaplowitz, as Jerry Seinfeld in the 90s go, you ever notice how girlfriends are talking about math homework? A girlfriend's life revolves around home. They've got homework, homeroom. They want to run away from home to live with their 38-year-old celebrity boyfriend. It's amazing. Go seek that out. Jeremy Kaplowitz doing Seinfeld. It is hilarious. The Mary Sue wrote about that relationship. The relationship caused a bit of a stir, but not in the ways it would today. People magazine made them their cover story in March 94. But instead of being centered around the fact that when they started dating, Lone Steen was underage. That's the Mary Sue writing that. It was about how the unlikely couple makes their romance work. Oh, there were a few jokes about the 21 year age gap. But mostly it's centered around Seinfeld's struggles to make relationships work as comedy's biggest star, me interjecting at 38, his girlfriend is 17, and how much fun their relationship must be for Lonestein. There are also the usual quotes from the family and friends about how mature she is for her age and how age is just a number, you know, the whole she's got an old soul bit. In Indie Week, Bobcat said, Jerry's talking about my act that I probably haven't done in 20 years. This is the, for those of you who aren't hip to this, this is when Bobcat used to do the screaming thing. Right, he'd get on and be like, ah, 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 like a crazy person, and he doesn't do that anymore. He's got different stand up now. By the way, he does a great Bono impression. Remember the time he came out and just suddenly went into like with or without you? That was great. So he says he's talking about my act that I haven't done in 20 years, and he still does the same act from 30 years ago, and that's the filter he's judging me through. Yeah, it's funny after all these years, he finally has an opinion about something, and it's me. His question was whether I'm funny or not, and comedy subjective. Some people find Richard Pryor, Andy Kaufman, and George Carlin funny, and other people find it funny to discuss where the socks grow in the dryer. (laughs) It's like any kind of art. Is Michael Bolton not a good musician? You know, Michael Bolton worked for a lot of people, and you can't take that away from anyone who connects with someone on an emotional level, but so does Iggy Pop. And I'm just saying, I'm inclined to go to an Iggy Pop concert. Bob Cad vs. Jerry Seinfeld. Hope you found that enlightening. That's your comedy news for today. Subscribe on Apple, Google, Amazon, Pandora. Follow on Spotify. And once you retweet this on social media and help share the show. Appreciate you listening. See you tomorrow. That was fun and, uh, you know, a little wacky.